So we've just got basically to the fields and uh, all the way here um, Archie's been really really over excited it like really sort of anxious um, it's, it is over excitement uh, so what I've done is I'm, I'm putting him on the tether straight away because I've just we've just got to here and uh, up in the distance over there there was some people with some dogs and I let him off and instantly his first um, his first move his ears pricked up he saw the dogs and the people like three four hundred yards away and uh, his first instinct was to just run for them now what I did is I didn't panic or anything I just turned around and started walking in the opposite direction and I called this way this way until he came and uh, when he came back I just put him straight on the on the tether because if I'd have left him he would have just bolted for these people and their dogs and because we've just got to the fields um, the last couple of weeks what I've done is I've just let him off and giving him that freedom to just uh, to just run around and be free but today I think he's got it into his mind that he knew that I was going to let him off so he thought he could try and challenge me and just do what he wants and I could sense that all the way here like walking along the road and stuff I could see that he knew that I would probably just let him go and uh, yeah so what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to keep him on the tether for an hour or so and uh, we're going to practice the recall again basically go back to square one and uh, just just uh, hammer it home with him again because with dog training as well it is very much sort of two steps forward and one back every time and this can go on for a while but um if you try and run before you can walk sort of thing then what he's going to do is just take advantage of you and you just got to try and identify that problem before it happens and uh i could tell from his body language that he sort of knew that i was going to let him go he knew it as soon as we got to the grass he got very very over excited started really pulling on the lead and he was looking everywhere for other dogs so i knew instantly that um we was going to have a bit of a problem hey hey ah 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 no no now he's just a little bit over playful as well there again, he's just trying to jump all over Kai. Hey, hey! Chase! Don't start! And what that in turn is doing is now setting off my dogs. Hey! Enough! Enough! So it might seem like I'm shouting at them and screaming at them, but I'm not. All I'm doing is raising my voice to um, exert my dominance because it's four against one here with the males. And uh, if, if I don't exert dominance over them, they're just going to walk all over me. So you really need to uh, just get a control of it straight away. Especially when they're this age as well. When they're this young, you need to get control of his emotions instantly. And the only way you can do it is by uh, be, being very, very dominant with him. You alright, mate? Hey!
Come on, this way. Have a good day, yeah? So there again, uh, I know this guy. He's got two very little dogs. And uh, again, I just wanted to exert dominance over Archie. Just make sure that he doesn't uh, snap or get too excited. And uh, again, if you, if you notice the call that I'm doing, what I'm trying to do is avoid using his name. Because I think he's becoming sort of uh, emotionally immune to it. And uh, that can happen because just overuse of a dog's name uh, especially if it's being confused like if you're telling your dog off and you're using its name and you're being over affectionate with him and using his name it, what that's doing is just co it's just creating confusion and uh, you just won't listen if you if you continue to use his name in that fashion so what I do is I just use the uh, universal sheepdog call of just hey, 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 here. Yeah. And you can see it works a lot better. And uh, when you use that, that call, you can, you can put a lot of dominance behind it just by call, making the call come from your stomach and uh, the the deeper, hey, hey, this way, this way, Archie, hey, hey, it's just gone round the tree there, this way, hit, hit, good boy, yeah, so, you, like, the call is the, uh, is the key to behavioural problems, especially with young pups. Um, I had the same problem, like this, this problem that you're having with Archie with the, uh, what you're calling aggression, with this growling and snarling, it's, it's not aggression. Um, he did it again in the car park this morning. When, when I first got there, he started to get a little bit overexcited and he started growling and snarling a little bit of a bark but it's not aggression um, a lot of people mistake it for aggression because obviously he's barking at another dog but um, if you uh, if you look at his body language and if you study uh, canine body language you can you can tell the difference um, from the shape of his tail uh, from from how his ears are, are, are standing or laying down, um, the use of uh, his gums, if his teeth are showing and stuff like that, that's all signs of, of aggression. Uh, also, his tail will not move, it will stand basically upright in a vertical position and he'll take a stance where he'll put his head lower to the ground and his backside a little bit higher that suggests aggression but what what I noticed in the car park is um, it wasn't aggression what he's what he's doing is he's, it's over excitement and it's all it is is his age it's just because he's still so young and uh, he's just getting very excited he knows where he's going he knows who I am he knows my dogs and uh, yeah he's just getting over emotional and what that could be is hey here is uh, over affection now I say this a lot to people and a lot of people don't really understand what I mean by over affection um, when it comes to dogs um, what they need is balance in their life. If if you can't provide balance uh, to the dog's life, then the dog will become unbalanced itself. So there's three main things that a dog needs to be balanced, and that's exercise, discipline, and affection. 
and these three things are really really important they're the they're the base contributors to any behavioral problems that a dog's having so if a dog's not getting enough exercise it can become anxious stressed out and uh over emotional like what he is right now now i'm not saying that that's just because he's not getting enough exercise um but if we also if he's not getting enough discipline then that can lead to barking snarling which we've witnessed as well now all of that can be attributed to over affection if you're too over affectionate with the with dogs and you're not putting in as much hey hey here if you're not putting in as much time with exercise and discipline as you do with affection what then happens is he becomes oversensitive and I think that's what's happening with him I think as I think what's happening is he's he's being over over loved <laughs> if you can sort of understand that you really need to make a balance of the three and you need to have the same amount of exercise discipline as he is getting an affection now I'm not saying don't be as affectionate to him as you have been but maybe um, well you definitely need to balance it out with more exercise and more discipline if you want to carry on being over affectionate with him because right now his emotions are clearly one-sided he's too over affectionate he wants to get involved with everybody and everything and that just suggests to me that he's being cuddled loved and praised every minute of the day which is not a bad thing it's not a bad thing but again if you don't balance it out it can lead to serious serious problems he will become scared uh, frightened uh, and aggressive because of it hey hey here 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 come on good boy good boy well done so uh, and this is just something I've picked up today I've just noticed it really today because last week he wasn't so he wasn't this overexcited but um good boy yeah I think he just needs a little bit hey stop pulling see now he's rolled over because I've he knows he knows what he's doing is wrong so he's trying to he's trying to act soft by rolling over and pretending that he's not doing anything wrong he understands what he's doing is wrong here chase hit here no no and you can already tell this has just been what 15 minutes now he's already understood that he can't jump all over Kai you go back a little bit hey hey down now what's going on there is is uh, Biggie is just basically trying to exert his dominance hey hey because he knows that oh hey stop eating that chase bully stop eating that no right let's get away from here because there's too many mushrooms um
over excitement. Yeah, we just need to uh, control that today, I think. Um, I've heard Emma say that a couple of times now that um, it's just getting a little bit overexcited and snarling and barking a bit. So today we're going to work on that and uh, get down. Right, we've got some dogs behind us here. And uh, with him on the tether, we're just going to basically monitor his emotions. He knows that the dog's there. He knows he's on the tether and he can't go too far. This way! This way! Come on! Come on! So he knows he's on the tether and he knows he can't run off. But I can guarantee if he was off the tether right then he would have run. Um, I sensed it a little while ago before I got the camera out. He, it was the same emotion there. He's beginning to calm down. But, uh, yeah, I, I, like, I can read dogs like a book. I can, like, because I've worked with them so long, I can sense their emotions. I can see it in their body language and stuff. And, uh, hey! Calm! Calm. He's starting to get to grips with it now. He has calmed down a lot. But I'm going to continue to be very dominant with him today. Um, and hopefully we can, we can improve that. And then in an hour or so, I'm going to let him off the... I will let him off the tether and give him some freedom. But the first first opportunity he takes to misbehave he's going straight back on it and uh, what we're going to do there is just show him that I'm in charge and uh, any misbehaviour he will be punished but you can already see that he's calming down he's not jumping over Kai anymore good boy good boy Yeah, he's, he's at least 75% calmer than what he was 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. There's been a dramatic change. And uh, as a dog owner, you need to be able to identify that and uh, correct bad behaviour before it actually uh, occurs. The quicker you can identify the problem and correct it, the less chance you've got of him uh, committing that same offence again. Good boy! Good boy, Archie. Well done. Go on in. Hey, calm. Hey, 
here you can see he's being very soppy now and that's because he's he's uh, actually giving in to me he's trying to give in and he's trying to show that he's not doing anything wrong that's what all that rolling around is he's trying to pretend that he's not doing anything wrong and uh, he's trying to basically play the victim but he knows you can you un if you understand the dog you can tell that he knows he's doing wrong but he wants affection yeah and he's seeking affection from me to uh, to approve of his behavior if you offered affection right now what you're doing is basically saying it's okay to do what you're doing and what I'm doing is I'm turning the table on him and I'm saying no it's not okay to do this he has to listen to you you have to make the dog listen to you and uh, I think that he's been getting away with far too much and it's like you can't blame yourselves you can't blame yourself as an owner if you don't understand dogs in a professional manner it's very very easy I see it every day with people every single day uh, all dog owners do the same thing they praise their dog at the wrong time they tell their dog off at, the, at, at, at times that they shouldn't no one gets it right the only people that get dog training right are professionals or people that understand dogs nine nine I'd say at least nine out of ten people get it wrong and uh, you often see those people blaming everybody else um, for their own dogs behavior but what what has happened is they've praised their dog for doing stupid things for so long that the dog just thinks it's okay And you can tell that my tone is keeping him completely in line. And uh, this is what puppies, uh, they, they need this. They need guidance. Uh, all dogs are looking for um, a leader, a pack leader. And if you don't provide it, basically the, the problems begin. And uh, I think that's what the problem is with Archie right now, is that there isn't a pack leader within his ownership right now. And uh, there's no one standing out above the rest. I think he's uh, being treated too much like a baby. He's being loved too much. <laughs> and again, it's not a bad thing to love your dog, but um, uh, like with my dogs, for instance, I don't, I don't pet my dogs at all. The only time I ever pet my dogs is when they do something right. And I, what I do is I use affection as a reward basis. I don't offer affection just for the sake of it because uh, you do... <laughs> You just you're just uh, making your dog soft and uh, stupid. Come on, let's go. So, but with Bully as well, I've only had Bully a year, and he was going through the same problem that Archie's got right now. Exactly the same problem. Um, when I first got him, he was snarling at other dogs. He was barking at other dogs, and it wasn't aggression. It was just over excitement. Um, he wasn't used to being off the lead and being free. He wasn't used to being told no. And uh, now, a year later, I can just leave him to it. He, he doesn't bark at any dogs anymore. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't get aggressive anymore. And what that is to do with is a balance of exercise discipline and affection it, and it has to be a really good balance you have to get it so right um hey hey
Good lad. And it's such fine margins that it's one of these things that the more you, the, the older your dog gets, and the more research you do into behavioural studies, um, the more in tune with uh, with their emotions you become. But as I said, this is something I've learned, like in over the years. Like I've been doing this thirty years, so. For me, it's just second nature. But, um, this is not a major problem. It's nothing that can't be turned around, but it's gonna take um, a lot of dedication and a lot of work. And, uh, I hate saying this to people, but this over-affection that he's getting needs to be brought down a level, definitely. Overstimulated by his name, overstimulated by cuddles and kisses and love. Uh, it's got to be brought down a level. Or exercise and discipline training has to go up a level. And that means longer walks every day, more uh, lead training, more... Uh, basic command training every single day to balance out the amount of affection that you're giving your dog it has to you have to go one way or the other now personally it's a lot of work to over love your dog and then um, balance that out with more exercise and more discipline it's really difficult so personally I would say cut down on the on the uh, on the emotional side of it and the affection try to use affection as reward like a lot of people use treats sweets and stuff and biscuits as reward um, I've never been into that I'm more into using it affection as a reward if you do something good if you listen to my command then you get cuddles and love and kisses um, and I find this works a lot better when I'm at home I don't even touch my dogs when they're indoors I just leave them I never ever play with them I never uh, cuddle them like over cuddle them or call ah oh, baby baby none of that none of that it's really unhealthy for a dog because uh, all you're doing is basically telling the dog that you're a weak leader so it's something to think about and something that uh, I can help with you to work on and stuff but um, really you need to what you need is um, to see this in writing really coming from experts um, if you know Caesar Milan the dog whisperer um, he he's got a website that explains all of this in great detail and he, he will explain it a lot better than I do but um, even on my website I've got a page called canine psychology and uh, there's a lot to read and there's a lot to take in but if you can read it a few times until you sort of understand it um, you'll have a much more balanced approach to dog walking and training than you have right now. And uh, I advise you to um, watch some Dog Whisperer and Caesar Milan and just watch how he uh, trains his dogs. Um, there's loads of, him, loads of videos of him on the internet and if you just type in the problem that you're having and uh, it will come up and you can uh, then you, then you can watch the video and then start training Archie to do the same thing but um, it's always good to uh, research like even now I still research problems like dog training is, is an ongoing process it's one of those things that never ever ends even now Biggie he's 17 years old and I still train him every single day to do basic commands um, to listen to my to listen to my every sound and he's 17 
so it's not something that you can just do in a few months and then just leave you have to do it every single day every single minute of the day but uh I just wanted to get that out on this video just to uh just to try and help a little bit because I can see the problem that he's having and uh, I can identify it straight away but he's a lot calmer now and I think if I was to let him off right now he would be okay and uh, I think I'm gonna as it goes I'm gonna put the camera down for five minutes because my arm is going completely numb but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start doing some more videoing in a minute.